Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving a classic problem and it's about decomposing a function into two parts, an even function and an odd function. So let's get started. We have any function f going from a subset of the real numbers to the real numbers such that x satisfies the following property. For all x in x, negative x is also in x. So what that means is that we have a degree of symmetry. It's, for example, something like this is a subset, so the symmetric subset across the real line also has to be in the domain. In fact, we can write it like this x is in x if and only if negative x is in x. Both sides of the implication hold. Now what we're going to be proving is that there exists unique functions, an even function and an odd function. We're, call, we're going to call them fe and fo and each one maps from x into the reals. Such that for all x in x, f is f of x is equal to f e of x plus f o of x. So we're going to be decomposing the original f into an even and odd part and we're going to show that the even and odd parts are unique. Now for those who don't know, I'm going to quickly recap what even and odd functions are. So let's say g is a function mapping from x into the reals with the same property of x this symmetry property. Then G is even if for all X in X G of negative X is equal to G of X and g is odd if for all x in x g of negative x is equal to negative g of x. Now you might be wondering about the terminology and the motivation behind these definitions. So I'll quickly mention to you what's going on. Um, the even and oddness has to do with x to the n. Let's say h n of x. Uh, so this is a polynomial. You can research this on your own that um, this is even or odd depending on the evenness and oddness of the degree n. And if you're wondering what even and oddness mean in terms of the graph, the even function, it's like a parabola where what happens over here symmetrically happens over here. So we have symmetry across the y-axis. And the odd function, it's like the cubic function where what happens here gets rotated to over here. And another way of thinking it is that we first flip it this way and then we flip it across the x-axis. So first the y-axis and then the x-axis. So now that we have the preliminaries out of the way, let's prove that the even function fe and the odd function fo actually exist and are unique. Now I could define them and then prove exist uh, and then prove existence that way just out of a hat, 
and um, then prove uniqueness. But I think it'd be better if we do it in a more motivated way. So we'll, we'll prove uniqueness than existence. And you'll see what I mean by these two words in just a moment. So suppose FE and FO exist, then it satisfies a couple of properties. Remember, this is even and this is odd, and that's going to be important. First of all, f of x is equal to fe of x plus fo of x, right? Because that was in the definition. This is a decomposition, an additive decomposition. Secondly, if we use negative x instead, then clearly we get fe of negative x plus fo of negative x. And by evenness and oddness, we can write these as fe of x minus fo of x. Okay, so we've got a we've got a couple of equations here. We got we've got this one and we've got this one. And what you might notice is that we can solve for fe and fo of x each. So what we'll do is we'll call this 1 and we'll call this 2 and we'll add them and subtract them. So if we add them and divide by 2 we get f of x plus f of negative x is equal to f e of x and if we subtract them and divide both sides by 2, then we get f of x minus f of negative x is equal to f o of x. So probably you've realized we've just solved for this f of e of x and f of o of x in terms of f. There should be a half over here and here. So let me write these out for you so that it's clear exactly what's going on. f of e of x is equal to f of x plus f of negative x divided by 2. And f of o of x is equal to f of x minus f of negative x over 2. So this over here, it proves uniqueness. Because we just showed that the even function fe and the odd function fo, they can only be one function each in terms of f. All is left to do is prove that this is in fact a decomposition into even and odd functions. So what's left is existence. We have to prove that f is equal to fe plus fo. And we also have to prove that fe is even and fo is odd based on these definitions. And that should be quite doable, so let's do that. First of all, let's, let's see what happens in terms of the sum, whether the sum holds. We have f of e of x plus f of o of x is equal to, we're going to be using this and this, and if you, if you take a look, there's going to be some cancellation, and we're left with 2 times f of x over 2, which is simply equal to f of x. So we have this property. Next, we're going to prove that f of e is even. 
So remember, f of e, we need to show that f of e of negative x is equal to f of e of x. So what we'll do is I will sub in negative x over here, and that gives us f of negative x plus f of x, because this is double negative, makes a positive. And now we can use commutativity to get f of x plus f of negative x over 2. And that's simply f e of x. So we do have that it's even. And finally, we're going to prove that f of o is odd. So again, we'll sub in negative x. And what we get is f of negative x minus f of x over 2. We factor out a negative, so we get negative f of x minus f of negative x over 2. And that's simply negative f of o of x. So that proves that f of o is, in fact, an odd function. So that takes us to the end of the proof. Let's do a recap. First, we talked about the property that we need in order to actually sensibly talk about even and odd functions. Then we defined the problem that we're going to be working on, which is that there exists unique even and odd functions that allow for this additive decomposition. Then as a reminder, we define even functions and odd functions and looked at some graphical representations of even and odd functions. Then instead of proving existence followed by uniqueness, we thought we could do uniqueness followed by existence, which we did by solving a system of equations. So first we proved uniqueness, and finally we proved existence by verifying that these three properties hold, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.